my friends, and welcome to episode 95 of the Kiss Army Nation podcast. I'm Pasquale Vary, one of your hosts. And I am Curtis Pera. Welcome to the show, everyone. If any of our listeners have been on Kiss Cruise 8, they have heard, seen, and experienced the raw energy of Thunder Mother. Fresh off her tour with the Scorpions, we are honored and proud to have on our show songwriter, musician, music producer, label owner, and of course, the founder of Thunder Mother, Philippa Nassel. Welcome to the Kiss Army Nation podcast, my dear friend. Yay! You! <laughs> I love Kiss Army. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> be before we start, I, I got to tell you, I'm going to fanboy a little bit. Um, I saw <laughs> videos of you guys uh, from the Kiss Cruise, and it doesn't compare to when we saw you, Claudio and I, in Montreal opening for the Scorpions. And it's like, we didn't want the show to end. And when you guys left the stage, I'm not joking, I went straight to Amazon and bought all of your records. Thank you know, you. I've been playing them ever since. Just a fantastic show, a fantastic band, great music, and we can't believe that you're on our show. Thanks again. Oh, thank you. That That is the best compliment when you buy all the records. <laughs> That's right. It really That's did. Right. We're so Thanks. thrilled. We're uh, so thrilled, Filippa, to have you in the show. So let's uh, let's uh, jump right in. So um, anyone who knows uh, Thunder Mother knows that there has been significant changes with the band. And we will obviously address that on this episode. But first, we would like to build a context to what is presently happening at this stage in your career. So first, can you tell us about you growing up in Stockholm, in Sweden? Uh, well, uh, I don't, uh, I live in Stockholm, but I didn't grow up here. I grew okay. up in the south of Sweden, but that's, no one knows that, you know. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I moved to Stockholm when I was 16 um, by myself and I rented a room uh, in my aunt's house and I studied electric guitar in uh, Stockholm Music Conservatory. Okay. And I was the only girl uh, amongst 90 about boys, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then I just, uh, I, I moved around to a university city uh, where I started Thunder Mother and I became a music producer. So I got the license for that and I went three years of education for that. And then um, I, w I moved back to Stockholm because this is where the music uh, industry lies and, mm -hmm. you know, people and rehearsing rooms and stuff like that. So I've been living here now for, like 13 years or so okay and um i i have a small apartment here so i'm sitting in the bedroom right now it's very <laughs> difficult to get get an apartment in stockholm <laughs> yeah, for, for sure and yeah. uh, what, what's uh, what styles of music fascinated you and why uh well i grew up listening to uh, like ozzy osbourne and uh, like rock and heavy metal and stuff like that dad and uh, accept and stuff but then uh, I like discovered ACDC when I was 24 and I, I also listened to Kiss, obviously. Okay, okay, you know? <laughs> okay. Um, it wasn't my favorite band, but I, I thought the logo was cool and the music was really rock and roll. So I had like Kiss jackets and stuff like that. Okay. Um, but um, I discovered ACDC and fell in love when I was 24 years old. Wow. Wow. And uh, since then, I listen to like all kinds of rock music and blues. Okay. okay. So let me ask you something uh, about Kiss. Uh, when when we saw you guys in Montreal, as Pasca was saying uh, in the opening, it is it was clear to me that you guys are also very strong visually. Okay, the way you move in stage, you know, and and the energy that basically you transmit. Uh, with Kiss, um, what is it that attracted you most? Uh, it, was it the visuals or was more into the music? Actually, everyone says the visuals, but for me, it was the music and the and the the cool logo. Okay. I love a good brand. I, I'm a little bit of a visionary myself. I love like good looking uh, logos and uh, stuff like that. And I thought they were like metal because they looked pretty metal. Mm -hmm. but then I heard the music and I was like, wow, this is blues rock, you know? Okay. So I fell in love with the music and, um, you know, learned a lot of key stuff. Super cool. Super nice. Yeah. So Philippa, as I said in the intro, you have quite the impressive resume. So take us through some of those impressive hats that you wear. So first, tell us about Philippa, the songwriter. Uh, I see myself as a songwriter first and foremost. I write songs every day. I have a studio where I record in Stockholm City. 
and uh, every day I sit and write and produce uh, music. So that's the biggest hat I have. I love writing music and uh, I see myself more as a songwriter and pre producer than a guitarist, actually. Mm. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, I do guitar because it's necessary and I love playing on stage, uh, but I don't practice enough, you know, uh, I don't know all all the guitar tricks in the world, but I figure it out as I, I hear a vision in my head what I want to play. And then I f like figure it out, you know. <laughs> oh, nice! So I'm a, I'm a riff maker. I love good riffs uh, and good songs. Um, that's something I love and done since I was uh, like almost ten years old. Wow! Wow! Yeah. I, I have a talent. big I have a big collection of music I've done and registered on Gima. Nice. Yeah, on Gima songwriting associ association. Okay. Cool. Cool. And how about Philip, the music producer? Well, um, I uh, was offered a record deal when I was 16. I was sitting on the street in Stockholm and played guitar. Oh, wow. So I earned a few bucks, you know, from people passing by. And uh, I looked at the money I made afterwards and I found a card from a, a label in uh, Belgium. And uh, they put me in a studio and I recorded stuff, but then they changed it. So it was like to pop the producer. Okay. And I tried to explain what I wanted, but I, he didn't understand my words because I didn't know the music production language. Mm. So then I decided to study and become a music producer. So I went to university and yeah, I learned everything about music produ production. Fantastic. You really take matters into your own hands. I mean, you see, you seem to be the type of person that has a vision and you'll do yeah. anything to make that vision happen. That's who I am. Yeah. You, that, is, you know. <laughs> that, is, that is amazing. That is and awesome. finally, how about Philippa, the label owner? Well, uh, I thought, why not? You know, <laughs> I saw some stats, uh, like all the business people uh, in Sweden is like 95% men. Mm hmm label owners and i was like that's good not that's not good i need to uh, help the statistics so i just Step started... in. <laughs> <laughs> i decided to do a label so i went a lot of courses and lectures and learned everything how a label works and um, i started my own label raspberry rocks okay wow uh, philippa you know for for you know uh, as, as Paz was saying you know the drive that uh, that you have you know uh, of course led you to the formation of uh, Thunder Mother. So uh, can, can you share with us how did that uh, very impressive band first uh, got together? How did you guys form? Well, uh, I was um, living in the student town and I just thought, what should I do with all this knowledge now that I've learned, that I collected and my inspirations are ACDC, etc. And I was like, just, just going to start my own band, basically. Okay. So in one day, I wrote three songs, um, Shoot to Kill, a, a song called Cheers, because <laughs> I love beer, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, a, a song called Thunderous. Okay. And um, then I started looking for members, and it was very difficult to find in the student town. Um, I had a few different ones I tried out, some guys even on drums. I tried a little, played a little bit on the, you know, um, youth uh, yard where they have uh, kids uh, playing pool. Yeah. I tried to play live for them and see what worked. And I realized that I want to be like the top crazy rock and roll and speed band that's headbanging and just take over the stage without regrets. And, um, I really believe in my vision, so I moved to Stockholm to find uh, band members, and that's been a long ride to find, you know, a good people with the same vision. It's been difficult. Of course. How, how old were you when you when you did that? When you when you when you made that uh, big move? I was twenty five years old. Wow, wow. Yeah. And did you always have the vision of of get, of forming a band with, uh, 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 let's say, with all members uh, female or or? Uh... Or it, it could be, you know, guys or or or, or girls. So was there in any direction in your in your head there moving forward? Well, I, I only played with uh, like mostly men in my life. Mm -hmm. and I am a little bit of a tomboy, you know, a girl boy. I am mm -hmm. more like a guy inside. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
But um, I had a show with a, a guy drummer and three girls because I thought it would be cool to like support women. Mm -hmm. I had no female inspiration growing up. Uh, there was none. I, I didn't even think about girls could play, basically. Um, but for me, it's just a part of my identity. Um, and then someone in the audience came to me. You should try to have everybody, like all girl band. Yeah. I haven't even thought about, about it. And I was like, that would be really cool, you know? Okay, yeah. So I, just, and, uh, so I decided to find only girls. And um, I just stack, stick to that vision now, I guess. Okay. Okay, so uh, you know, you you share with us kind of the direction that, that you wanted to give the band. You know, basically, you know, uh, go for it and take up the stage and everything. Do you think that the band stayed true to its original course, what you had in mind at the very beginning? Did you guys stay true to it? Um, that's been that's a good question. <laughs> that's been the difficult part. Uh, as soon as I had band members, everyone. Uh, spread in different direction what they want to do yeah that's natural everyone has their own style obviously mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Their own but um i haven't been willing to uh, to um you know change my my vision for the band because they're they could also also start like their own band and i've been very honest with that I, this is my vision i want to fulfill this vision so i hope you can listen to a little bit of this music and this music and I like what you hear and play this music with me. But it's been right. difficult. But I've been true to myself. You know, in, in any team, you know, activity and more in a band, you know, when you guys, you know, you really want to go for it, it is tough. But I think uh, what you said, it, it's true. So you have to stay true to what you believe in. And, uh, you know, if some other people do not share the same vision, well, you know, they can, they can uh, form their own band, as you said, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I started the band with... I want to do my thing now because I've been in so many bands before I started the band and I, I played the role of someone else and so, I wasn't comfortable as a guitarist in that manner because I want to I want to make my own songs and like you know and I always uh, I love collaborating with people so I invited everybody to write with me and I encourage people to write uh, music but sometimes they go a little bit in another direction and that becomes a, a difficult discussion you know okay. so um right now um we've been very much uh, separated where we want to go as well okay. Musically. yeah okay. i mean it doesn't compare to uh to a rock band but i've organized kiss related events here in montreal and like you i understand what you're talking about i have a vision for where i want this event to go and what i how i want the event to look like and, you know, if people want to come help me achieve that vision, please, you're more than welcome. But if you have a different vision, I'm sorry, but you could organize your own party. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're here, yeah. to support, you're here to support me in what I want to do. You know, yeah. so I, I, I totally understand that. And it's, uh, that's the problem, like, uh, with the uh, females. I, I have experienced a lot of problems with girls because, I, like I said, I'm more like a guy. <laughs> mm -hmm. and I'm very easygoing and I just want to play rock and roll. And then I don't. I don't like to have drama and these big discussions. And I just said, I just say the honest truth then, because I don't have a long life. I only have one life and I want to do uh, the music I love. And I want to find people that love the same music, you know? Yeah. So it's difficult. It is. Oh, it is. I, I, yeah. I think that's an amazing philosophy that you have. And uh, don't ever change, no matter what. Don't let anybody change you. <laughs> Thank you. I am. Um, I, I have really good support and a lot of love from fans that uh, want to hear more music from uh, from Thunder Mother. Myself yeah. included. <laughs> oh. Of course. <laughs> well, so, I, so I want to switch to uh, to Kiss a little bit because you were invited to the uh, Kiss Cruise and, you know, Thunder Mother being invited to a Kiss Cruise is a testament to the unique sound uh, of that band. There's something really special about Thunder Mother. So how were you guys invited on the Kiss Cruise? Uh, we had a manager back in the days. Right now, we don't have any manager since like two years. But uh, uh, that guy, uh, 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 what do you call, it? reported us like like a contest to a contest oh. to play. Like uh, there's ten bands that can uh, get a chance to play, and hundreds of bands apply, and we didn't even know about it. And then we just won. Uh, and then we got the email: "You won the Kiss Cruise thing." <laughs> and you had no idea you were in the contest. No. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. 
So, uh, and that was like a great surprise that so many people like our music and we didn't even know. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, I love, I love everything we've done and all the people that uh, support Thunder Mother through the years. It's been a great time and especially the Kiss Cruise was one of the best times in my life, you know. <laughs> well, I can attest to that. <laughs> yeah. That so... I know I saw from pictures that you met uh, the members of KISS, right? What are your thoughts yeah. about the band? Really good. Really, really good. Um, I think uh, Paul is really funny. Yeah. <laughs> he's a funny guy. And uh, I, I haven't talked to Gene, but uh, he I think he's an inspiration. Because I went to his inspiration talks, mm -hmm. uh, uh, business talks. And I thought it was really, really cool stuff that he said on the cruise. And um, obviously, um, I love the whole band. Everyone is so talented, you know. And I also Ace Freely was there, and that yeah. was really cool. And he um, and us, we played uh, some ping pong and hang out in the lounge. So that was like also I was shocked by how humble he was. And uh, I was invited backstage with uh, Ace Freely and his band. Only only I. And uh, that was just fantastic. We took a few pictures together, and uh, nice. you know. Yeah, when I opened the tequila, he went away, but because he don't drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like I, I go to my room now, but you guys party, Ace said. So I was like, thanks, Ace. You know, <laughs> hang out Coming with your from band. Ace, I'll take it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I'll hang out with your band, Ace. <laughs> <laughs> so of course, you know, Kiss Cruise introduced Thunder Mother to a whole new legion of fans, the Kiss Army. So what were your experiences with the Kiss Army? Fantastic people. I've never seen anything like it, uh, ever. I'm a part of ACDC fan club and mm. Kiss Army goes uh, the extra mile compared to the ACDC yeah. club. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like I'm a part of Kiss Army now. I go to uh, your events and stuff. Uh, also here in Sweden, there are a lot of Kiss Army stuff. Oh, and yeah. I, and um, as soon as I see there's a Kiss exhibition or something, I go. And uh, and I met actually the guy. Uh, in, he's a Swedish guy that founded the army. Uh, as, at least he claims he did. I the, okay. the Sweden Kiss Army. Yeah. He, okay. He the Swedish Kiss Army. So and uh, um, yeah, it feels like a big family, and everyone's been so welcoming, and and um, I love I love it. You know the the Kiss Army in in Sweden. It's it's uh, not only big, but you know they they produce so much uh, material. You know there's uh, some awesome you know books and fan scenes coming from Sweden. You know they're really active, and uh, every time they go to the uh, to the cruise, uh, you know they 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 bring up you know uh, uh, t-shirts that are amazing. You know they have uh, so many designs. You know it's uh, so so unique. I I always. I, I was always attracted, you know, by by the Swedish guys. You know, they 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 seem to be so into it. They're so into it, and you get drawn in, you know. Yeah, that's you right. Know. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I also collect some kiss stuff right now. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's, yeah. It's contagious. <laughs> yeah, all the mugs and all the pics, and I'm I'm into that. You know, collecting. <laughs> it's really fun. I love it. Um, uh, Philippa, we're going to try something we have never done here on the Kiss Army Nation podcast. Uh, so we're going to include a fan segment to this interview. And we invited a huge Thunder Mother fan who would love to ask you a few questions. So uh, Philippa and the Kiss Army, please welcome a former fan profile guest back to the show, Michael Burnassian. <laughs> Hey, welcome to the show. Nice to meet you again. Hi, Felipe. Nice to see you. Uh, you know, great to see you again, actually. I mean, uh, yeah, I hope everything's going well for you. And, uh, you know, uh, thank you to uh, Pasquale and uh, Claudio for having me on their show again. Uh, they interviewed me last year. You know, I had my own episode and now they know very well that, uh, you know, I, I love your band. And uh, so they said, hey, come on and uh, ask a few questions. Because the last time, you know, I was on with, with Mitch, I, I didn't actually ask any questions. I just sat there and, you know, and raved about you. That's basically it. So you know, I didn't ask any questions. So today I asked, today I asked some questions. And I love your background. So, 
Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I aim to please. Uh, so before I ask my first question, Philippa, first of all, uh, thank you last year for coming, finally coming to North America and coming right. to Montreal. Uh, as far as I was concerned, the Scorpions Thunder Mother tour of North America was the tour of 2022. I mean, after 2020 and 2021, not going to any shows, at least, you know, here in North America, we were, you know, it, you know, or in Canada, it was, you know, a different situation than I think what you had in Sweden. So 2022 was the return to concerts for a lot of people including my two friends here uh but yeah i mean your tour with the scorpions i mean aside from seeing the show in montreal i followed the tour you know online you know watched what you guys were doing you know uh show to show and you know went on youtube uh looking for you know audio video of the shows just to see how the shows were going so it was it was great to see and you know seeing things like you going to the blue note you know where your grandfather played and you know seeing you know guernica see melody gardo at uh you know, uh, at uh, I can't remember the the venue. I think it was Birdland, I think, or or maybe I got that backwards. Sorry. I, I but, you know, things think, things like that were very cool, and you know, you meeting Buddy Guy, and you know, so that was you know, it was it was great to see, quite frankly, you know. So. Oh my God, I met I did so many cool things, and we all did. Uh, every chance I got, I took a taxi and went to see a, a show or something. I went lying down, yeah. sitting, I met Buddy Guy, all this crazy stuff. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Cool, yeah. cool. That's that 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 that's really good. I've I've done my traveling, uh, ac you know, around North America mainly with work and stuff. So you know, when you, when you're traveling with work, sometimes you just want to get out and, you know, do something outside of work. So you know, if there's a show, you go see a show. If you you know, there's a museum, you go see the museum. Yeah. But uh, you know, my first question relates to that tour. I mean, uh, that was the first time you did a a tour of that scope. You know, in North America, first time in North America touring, uh, first time touring with a big name act, you know, the Scorpions, and also, you know, first time playing arenas that size. So there were a lot of firsts. So yeah. my question is, you know, what did you learn from that tour? You know, both positive and negative that you hadn't learned or you hadn't realized, you know, before, you know, uh, about doing this kind of scale of, of touring. You know, I mean, it's, you know, it's a new experience. So you learn new experiences. They could be positive. They could be negative. So do you have anything? Uh, do you remember any things that stuck out as, as moments of like that, where you were like, wow, I never realized this, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, uh, it was a dream, for, first of all, to go there. Something I want yeah. always to do. And um, I realized it was very difficult to live on a bus for three months. <laughs> You know, um, and uh, it was uh, very long breaks in between, just on parking lots mm. uh, where we didn't do anything. So um, I tried to find uh, friends like uh, everywhere I went and experience stuff. But it, it was rougher than I believed, you know. But, then I, um, but I learned so much good things that like big bands like Scorpions, how humble and nice they were because uh, they're huge i mean they they treated mm -hmm. us like family and i was shocked by that and so nice guys and the production they had i never seen anything quite like it mm -hmm. uh, they had like 50 crew members i think from, just from america and then they brought like 10 guys from germany and we had one guy with us you know that helped us <laughs> <laughs> and they had 60. <laughs> Um, but, uh, so I learned so much and I, I hanged around a lot with the crew members to see how it works and, uh, asked how it works in America. So, um, you know, I got inspired to, uh, to, for a big production thing. So now I want to like also have this all big production stuff and, uh, you know, it's very inspiring, but, yeah. um, it's, it's a hard question because, because it was difficult the tour. It was, um, when you don't get along, especially. Uh, it was uh, hard on me, so I meditated a lot and I talked a lot up with uh, Rudolf Schenker and uh, we connected about, you know, keeping your inner peace and calm yeah. and find, a, 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 you know, some relief in meditation. That was, that sounds very oh. weird, but uh, it really helped me. <laughs> but then also I had the best parties of my life. I went into Chicago uh, two nights in a row. I uh, was invited to Buddy Guy's birthday, met his family, really cool, strong women uh, that's married to his sons that we I became really good friends with now and we have contact. And even Buddy Guy's son is uh, playing on a blues track I wrote. 
now. Oh, wow. Wow. I cool. have really many friends and good connections. And some of the friends I've made in America is coming over to Europe now and see Scorpions and Thunder Mother here in Europe. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, uh, I can understand why the tour sometimes, I mean, the Scorpions did, I think, what basically the Rolling Stones have been doing for, you know, a couple of years now where they do a show and then there's a few days off and then they do a show and then there's a few days off. I mean, it's it comes down to, you know, two things, I think, production size and also, well, let's be honest, their age. You know, they're not 20, 30 years old anymore. They are, right. you know, all, uh, you know, collecting pensions. You know, we all wish to have pensions like that. Uh, <laughs> but um Thank you for answering that question. Uh, second question, earlier this year, uh, you had a release of a song called Can't Take the Freedom From Me uh, with the Save the Noise Project. Uh, this is a song it seems like you wrote uh, about the war in Ukraine. And uh, so I, I think it, people should know about this, uh, if, you know, if not many people do know. So what is the Save the Noise Project? How did you get involved in it? How did you come about to writing the song? And yeah. Oh, you know so much. <laughs> uh, well, um, I, that, I try. Save, save the Noise is a, is a band for charity that, that changes musicians all the time. So uh, yeah. for like, one song, it's a lot of like 10 rock stars and another uh, musicians on another song and all the money and all the funds go to save the children around the world. And then uh, when the, the war happened uh, in Ukraine, they asked me if I wanted to write the next song. And I was very honored because I know all these cool people are going to play on it and it's for a good cause. And I was very upset by the war. Um, so I wrote a song about um, uh, like, no matter how bad people treat you, no one can take your um, spirit away and your freedom. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. And um, so I, I wrote from a, it's very hard, like difficult song to listen to sometimes because it's from a perspective of a, of a young uh, girl in Ukraine. Uh -huh. And um, I, I really can't stand when people uh, break the human rights and the children convention of the world. Children has rights. Uh -huh. It means a lot to me. Um, and, um, you know, I'm very honored that I could contribute in my little own way. And it's a, it's a great song and hopefully the project does more, more songs. And, you know, we're doing this interview or, you know, of Pasquale and, you know, Claudio are doing this interview and, you know, we're, I think we're exactly one year into this unfortunate illegal war. Yeah. So hopefully, uh, we, we see the end of it, uh, soon. Talking about that, um, I actually am involved in another project um, uh, also that's going to be released March 31. It's uh, for um, uh, like young people with dis disabilities. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah. So um, Good. Good. keep an eye out. I play guitar on a, on a new track in a music video as well. Oh, nice. 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 Good. Love it. Is, is, it in, uh, is it in a hard rock vein or is it a different style of music or? Well, it's a little bit more different uh, style. I think it's a radio song, but it's real uh, rock stars. I mean, uh, I play with the Pontus Norgren from Hammerfall and Chris Laney mm -hmm. from Pretty Maids, isn't it? And uh, a lot of cool people, but uh, it was a really good thing. Nice, nice. For a good cause again. I love yes. it, love it, love it. Good, good. Glad, glad to see when people do things like that uh, outside of their, you know, normal paying jobs. It's, uh, exactly. you know, it's good to see. Felipe, my last question. Um, as you can tell, I've done my research and, you know, I've been on YouTube enough to see, you know, a lot of Thunder Mother videos and other bands that I happen to like. Uh, I have noticed a few videos of you specifically going back more than 10 years where you're performing solo. Uh, you know, it's it's you singing and performing the song, um, you know, either acoustically or just you on guitar. Uh, that I believe they all predate the first Thunder Mother album. So my question is, just out of curiosity, I mean, do you see a day where you might want to record your own solo album? I mean, Thunder Mother has been your main vehicle for the past, you know, 10 plus years in terms of getting your music out there. Uh, but do you foresee a, a day where you know, there's a product released and the name on the product is Philippa Nassil. Well, thank you for asking. Uh, like you say, all my energy always gone to Thunder Mother 
all the rock songs I write, of course I do it for Thunder Mother, it's my priority in life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's who I am. Uh, but recently uh, I started writing uh, some like uh, Americana stuff. After mm -hmm. I, we went to the uh, tourist tour and the canal tour uh, North America. So uh, while I was a little bit bored uh, in the bus, I wrote uh, six lyrics. And when I came home, I recorded them. So actually, I've already recorded songs uh, that I'm singing and playing, but I haven't released anything yet. I have no label or anything. Um, mm. But um, it's uh, it's about my experience in the, in the, uh, the North American tour, from my perspective, and all the fun th fun things I did. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. That, that's that was great. an out, I mean, I... outlet for me that didn't fit to Thunder Mother, but I was like. Why should I just uh, let music die on my computer? It's right. better to get it out, even if it's, uh, you know, I, I just, it does, you know, what, it's not, it doesn't compete with Thunder Mother, but why don't just release it? I mean, it's, uh, I don't, I wouldn't call it a solo album. I was just, I just want to get my songs out there, basically. That's right. That's a mm -hmm. side project. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, okay. yeah, I'm, I'm doing it this year, I hope. Coming out with six uh, songs. It's like an EP. Nice, nice. Pasquale, Claudio, thank you very much for having me on. I appreciate it. Uh, nice seeing you guys. Hope you're both well. Same here, man. And, so uh, thank you so much. You, you're a friend of the house, and uh, it's been a it's been a true pleasure to have you, man. And uh, it's always nice uh, when you see fans like you that uh, they go deep, you know, into the not only the the music but information. And you know, uh, your questions were great. So thank you so much. So nice to meet you you're again. Welcome. Nice seeing Bye. you, Felipe. Take care. Okay. Hope to see you soon. Take care. Enjoy, enjoy the tour. Enjoy the tour with the Scorpions in Europe. Okay. I will. I promise. All right. Um, so, uh, Filippo, let's go to the question that has definitely been on the minds of Thunder Mother fans and Kiss fans as well. So, that shocking press conference announcing most of the members of the band will be taking a different musical direction. So, can you shed some light uh, with us? Um, to what led to this decision? Yes, um, I will try. I mean, it's a fairly private matter because I don't want to out uh, anybody and so so forth. We understand, of course. Uh, but I can say, like, after many tours, many, many, many tours during seven years and this long American tour, it just didn't work out anymore. We couldn't uh, uh, collaborate. And, um, you know, music is supposed to be fun and, uh, you know, it's more than uh, making money. It's not uh, my, about making money at all, or it's just, uh, it's a lifestyle, you know? So um, we, I, there's no good to solution to, to an event like that, you know? Of course, there's yeah. no easy way to, to do something and it's nothing I take lightly or anything. It's been uh, something that's been difficult for years and um so um you know i had to make the decision that we have to go separate ways or thunder mother will quit okay okay and um, i um decided after many many months and thinking that i can't uh, quit thunder mother okay. i don't want to quit thunder mother understood okay. i want to continue okay well you you were the driving force and still are the driving force and uh, you know as we as we were discussing early on uh, when you have a vision and uh, if you feel that uh, some of the other players you know they're not playing the same game well you know you need to move on you know and uh, you know it takes a lot of uh, it takes a lot of strength you know from you and uh, and uh, but when you when you know what you want you you need to keep going you know yeah. to keep going so, you know, Philippe, in, in that announcement, uh, you made it clear that rock will go on and so will the band. So you mentioned the possibility of uh, Linnea Wikström joining the band as the vocalist. Uh, what can you tell our listeners about her? Uh, Linnea um, sings Ethereum and uh, something called At The Movies. It's a YouTube channel uh, that ex started during the pandemic. Uh, she and some other stars did uh, uh, film music 
every Thursday during the pandemic to make people happy. Mm -hmm. And I, I love that concept. And I watch a lot of her singing them, that, that stuff. And um, actually, uh, Linnea tried in for Thunder Mother seven years ago. Oh, uh, oh we didn't know that. OK. Uh, but she, uh, she couldn't take the job uh, at that time. She had, was too busy in life. So uh, I, I uh, asked her again now, because I always liked her a lot. And uh, she was up for it. And, um, you know, we have been keeping contact because we became pretty good friends. Um, on my, in my studio, I have hired her during the year since she sings on my demos that I made. Oh. Ah, so we, I know we have a really good collaboration already and she sings and likes the same music. So uh, I'm so thrilled that she accepted this time. <laughs> nice, of course, of course, after so many years. That's awesome, that's yeah. awesome. And uh, you know, uh, there, we we always uh, we also knew, I uh, know through the uh, through the news that um, uh, you have a returning bass player, uh, my son, uh, yeah. who's coming back to the band. So that's uh, great news. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, um, my son been in Thunder Mother for many years. We did hundreds of shows together, and um, she went on study leave uh, one and a half year ago. Um, so uh, she finished her studies, she contacted me, I want to come back, I want to come back, you know, and uh, now when uh, this happened, um, yeah. and unfortunately, Mona and Emily decided to leave the band, which was very shocking for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, I'm still shocked and I still don't understand. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just asked my son, can you come back? She was like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I miss the fans and I miss the shows and I miss you, she said. Nice. And I was like, I love you. Like, you, of course, come, come back. And we play great together. We already played together as well and stuff. We played on the helicopters release party last year um, and stuff. So, uh, you know, we've been good friends all along. Nice, nice, nice. So it was an easy decision to take back uh, the old bass player. <laughs> <laughs> He's a lovely person inside and out. Super cool. And Philippa, have you found the drummer yet for the band? I uh, have a luxury problem problem with that right now. Okay, okay. <laughs> so uh, we're uh, in the process. In the process. Of, in the process. We have played uh, with a few already. Okay. So um, once you have the uh, the band members set for the uh, for for Thunder Mother, what are your expectations of the new band members for you? I mean, of course, the sound will be a little bit different. Um, Linnea's voice has a different character. Um, more, um, how do you say? Uh, it's hard to explain, but Dio, like really high, like Freddie Mercury stuff. Oh, wow. OK, high oh, pitch. Yeah. OK. Yeah. And um, so and I really, really love her voice. And she's very, very cool on stage as well, because I've seen her many times. Um, uh, I love that girl. She's crazy and fun. Nice. <laughs> that's, that's important. And, and, and easy going. Uh, as me, she's like more like a, a, a boy girl. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I, I think people will absolutely love it when they when they hear it. I, I'm, I'm sure of it. I'm, I'm very confident. Looking forward to hearing that. You, you're going to be blown away. Can't wait. Can't <laughs> that's wait. That's for sure. So having said that, I mean, are you envisioning uh, a new and different direction for the band? Do you know where the band is going to go uh, visually and sonically at this point? Visually, I have no idea. I'm not bad, uh, good with those stuff. You know, if I choose, I have a leather jacket or a jeans jacket. <laughs> right. Um, so uh, probably just the, back to the basics of uh, Thunder Mother, raw in your face, uh, you know, cocky rock, hard rock music um, that you cannot misinterpret. Interpret. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so because that's what I love and that's like the girls love it too. And uh, we have the same music taste and listen to the same music. That helps a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, if you stick to the roots, uh, you can't go wrong. And uh, this is what you guys been doing for, uh, for uh, quite some time. And uh, please do not change. You know, sometimes with time, 
you know, you, you have the tendency of, uh, of, of course, enhancing or improving, but sometimes that leads you to a completely different direction. And, uh, but uh, you have to keep the spirit, you know, alive uh, for, for our Thunder Mother and um, please do some, you know, so even, even if you change members or what happens, you know, with different bands, um, as long as you're there, because you're, uh, you're the heart and, and drive of, of Thunder Mother. So uh, keep it up, keep it up. Thank you, boys. <laughs> I will, and we will and I appreciate the support and uh, I hope you will like our new music that's going to come out. Of oh, course, oh, for course. sure. You know, Philippa, we covered a lot of, of ground on, on this episode. Uh, you know, we can't thank you enough for opening up uh, to us and, and giving us some insight into the world of uh, Thunder Mother. Sometimes, you know, uh, we have to we have to talk about, you know, touchy, you know, uh, topics. But, uh, you know, uh, thank you so much for uh, for sharing with us. And uh, it is only appropriate you we end the show with some final words from you. OK, what would you like to say to all of your fans out there? Well, uh, thank you for the support and uh, all these years that you supported me. In your, it means a lot because music is my life and music is what drives me. And uh, being uh, meeting people, meeting you guys uh, is something that I cherish and I want to continue doing that. So thank you uh, for the support. I love you. Thank you. Philippa, I'm not just saying this, I, I sincerely mean this. I'm talking to you today. I, I truly admire you and you are an inspiration um, for continuing to follow your dreams, to follow your vision, uh, no matter what. You seem to me to be a person who wears her heart on her sleeve. And I know that we asked some difficult questions and thank you again so much for your openness and candor answering those questions. And I could see that it wasn't easy for you but not once did you throw anybody under the bus. You've been, you're professional, you're kind, you're genuine. And it's as simple as I have a vision that I wanna continue. And I'm a high school teacher and I tell my students, never give up on your vision, no matter what. And you embody that. And I, I respect that so much. So thank you so much for being on the show, for sharing your insight, for sharing your story. It was truly an amazing, amazing talk. Thank you. That means so much. You don't even know. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I mean, I really need to hear that. It, it is, uh, I, I just want to stay true to myself and my vision and um, I have a good life and easy life and loving people and love around me. So. And I truly mean it. I truly mean it. Thank you, you know, there's always things, you know, uh, around us that uh, sometimes you know uh, can make us think that what we're doing maybe is not the right thing but if you stay true you know to your thoughts to your heart and uh, listen to your heart uh, yeah. sometimes you need to make difficult decisions but yeah. you know you did the right thing so uh, again that's when you when you go to bed and you know uh, late at night you're with yeah. yourself and you have to have a peace of mind you know yeah you have, need to have a good conscience and so i can sleep you know that's right exactly uh, exactly. life is complicated it is complicated yeah. it is, it uh, is. And, uh, uh, my my good friend said that his mother told him when he was young uh, if you're sad uh, like you don't happy with the, your life you need to strive for being happy yeah. and either either you cry or you someone else has to cry exactly. you know? yeah Absolutely. But maybe it's meant to be. Who knows? Exactly. Exactly. Thanks again, Philippa. You're awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. To the KISS Army, we hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please send them to talk to me at kissarmynationpodcast.com. Until the next time, remember, never stop rocking and follow your dreams. Take care, everyone. If you enjoyed this episode, like and subscribe on YouTube or follow us on Spotify, Automatic, iHeartRadio, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Don't forget to make yourself heard. Leave us a comment on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. See you all soon, Kiss Army.